Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. Before we get going, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when we do all of these dyno videos. Today we're taking a look at cylinder heads and more specifically, 5 liter Ford cylinder heads. We ran the same set of stock E7TE iron heads, usually found on a 5 liter Ford, on three different combinations. We ran on a 306 a 333 and a 392 stroker. And the interesting thing is, despite the fact that it only flowed about 160 CFM, it made more and more power on each one of these combinations. Basically, the cylinder head became even more efficient. One of the ways you can determine the power potential offered by a set of cylinder heads is to take a look at the peak airflow offered by the head. One of the general rules I like to use is if we take that peak flow and we multiply it by two. So if our cylinder head flows, say 160 CFM, like this factory forward head, we know that it probably could support fairly easily 320 horsepower. But on our combinations, you'll see we made even more power than that, meaning the head got even more efficient as we went up in displacement. And don't worry, we didn't just run the stock heads on each one of the combinations. We also stepped up to aftermarket cylinder heads to show how much more power was available on each one of the combinations. What do you say? Let's check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and find out how our stock E7TE cylinder heads do on kind of a stockish motor. By that, I mean it's 306 cubic inches, so this was a 30 or 40 over uh, 5 liter late model hydraulic roller block, and we use this to test a number of different cylinder heads. But what I want to illustrate is basically how much power this thing makes relative to its airflow, and then you can kind of see going up, we'll try this on different combinations, and then also you can see how much more power these combinations make with an even better cylinder head, because we did that on each of these examples. So we'll start off, as I said, 306 cubic inches. This was run with, we'll take a look at our test description here. This was run with an Extreme Energy 264 comp cam, so a step down from the normal Extreme Energy 274 cam that I usually run on things, and, and what I ran on the slightly larger 333 inch stroker that will be coming up in part two here. But I'll go ahead and put the specs up on our 264 cam, as you can see, fairly mild, but still a good healthy camshaft, much better than a production camshaft. And we ran this with an RPM air gap intake manifold, a 650 speed demon carburetor, a set of inch and five eighths long tube headers, and obviously adjusted the timing and air fuel with jetting to make sure that each combination made the maximum amount of power that it did. And we ran this with a flat top piston that had a uh, valve release in it. So run with our stock E7 TE head, remember flowing 160 CFM, our combination produced right at 306 horsepower. So right at one horsepower per cubic inch, basically with the stock head. And then if we take math, the math a little bit further and see that 306 horsepower with 160 CFM, that means that each CFM is providing 1.91 horsepower. So we're getting close to making two horsepower per CFM, which is normally the formula that I provide to people. If you multiply the peak flow number of the head by two, you get a fairly good estimation of what kind of power potential it can make. And as we'll see, most combinations like this one made less than this. And some combinations that we're going to look at actually make a much higher number than that. Basically using the same head, they make more power. And so that specific number goes up, as we'll see in both these other combinations. But here's what happened to give you an idea on how restrictive the stock head is on even basically is, you know, <laughs> kind of a canned five liter motor with a dual plane intake manifold. Let's take a look and see what we put an aftermarket head on here. We'll just pick the Edelbrock Performer head. We ran into a valve float problem here past 6,000 RPM. But with the Edelbrock head, we still increased the power up to 384 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 364 foot-pounds. You can see that the head, obviously, you know, these aftermarket heads, and we ran a number of these. We ran Brodex and Dart and Airflow Research and Trick Flow and, and GT40 and GT40X. And I know, you know, if you take a look at all these other videos that are up where I, where I combined all these heads, you can see 
um, almost all of the heads offered more power than the stock head, including the GT40 and stuff. But this one did very well, Edelbrock uh, Performer RPM, and we picked up quite a bit of power pushing it up toward the 400 horsepower mark. But this is how restrictive the stock head was on a 306 inch motor, making one horsepower per cubic inch. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we took this same head and used it on a 333 stroke. Now we can take a look at our second example using the very same E7TE small block forward heads. These things float about 160 CFM as we talked about. We ran them on a 333 inch stroker motor, testing again a number of different uh, forward cylinder heads. So we started off with a stock head and then installed in sequence a number of different other versions. But run with the stock head, we produced a 333 inch motor, which by the way is a 4.040, basically a 40 over, 5 liter production block, 40 over with a 3.25 stroke. And one of the more common ones might be a 3.4 inch stroke that they use to make 347s out of, but we picked the smaller stroke for this combination to use as a test for all of these cylinder heads. So we configured this thing with an Extreme Energy 274 hydraulic roller camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up. It's the 224, 232 cam that I run on a lot of small block forwards. It had an inch and 5 eighths headers. It had a dual, pl dual plane RPM style air gap. Uh, this was a crosswind version of that, a 650 Demon, an MSD distributor, and it had a uh, you know decent oil pan and that kind of stuff on it. And we naturally tuned every combination with the uh, jetting and timing to try to optimize the power. So run first with our E7TE heads that were, remember, just bone stock, unported, just valve spring upgrade on them. This 333 produced 351.6 horsepower, so more than one horsepower per cubic inch. And we can see that the torque number is quite a bit bigger than the horsepower number is. And right at 400 or 400.3 foot pounds of torque. And the interesting thing is if we do our calculations, if we take our power output of 352 horsepower and divide it by 160 CFM, we see that every CFM is producing 2.2 horsepower. So remember, normally I tell people that, hey, a good, a good idea um, or a good base kind of formula is it if you can double the, the, the peak flow number that you have for your cylinder head. So if you've got a cylinder head like we have and it flows 160 CFM, 320 horsepower is actually a pretty good number. Most combinations make less than that. In this case, we made a good bit more than this, 2.2 horsepower per CFM. So we had a lot of draw on this combination from the stroker motor. And just to give you an example of what happens when we run, you know, to show you what happens when we put more cylinder head on this, like how much was this head really restricting this combination. I'll be, it's kind of a mild combination with that 274 cam on a 333 stroker. But here's what happened when we put even a decent like aftermarket head. And this is with a trick flow uh, twisted wedge head, which is a good head. And it's been the go-to head for, you know, for decades now for the small block boards. Um, they probably sold about a bajillion of these uh, from back in the day. But the peak power jumped up to 438 horsepower. Peak torque was 436, so we're just right kind of getting e an even amount of horsepower and torque with the stroker combination. But as you can see, the heads basically picked up power from 2700 R RPM all the way up. So the, the even just an as cast, you know, your bare bones kind of twisted wedge head is a really good upgrade for a small block forward, especially a stroker when you kind of saddle it with a stock cylinder head. Now let's take a look at something where we had even more cubic inches to feed with our stock head going to a 393. Okay guys, we're going to take a look at one more example with our E7TE heads. Remember, these are the same heads that we ran on the 306 and the 331 and now this 393 inch motor and this is actually maybe my favorite combination that I've ever run the stock heads with because it showed such a high like specific power output based on that airflow. It's probably the highest that I've seen on any of these combinations and I'll tell you why in just a second. But we had a 393 inch motor from the guys at Ford Racing back, Ford Motorsports back in the day and uh, Ford Performance now. But they offer this, it was a 4030 bore and a 3.85 stroke. We had a healthy camshaft in it. It was a Comp XR286R uh, solid roller camshaft. 614, it was a street roller. 614, 621 lift. 
a 248-254 degree duration split at 110 degree lobe separation angle. Remember, our, the springs on our stock heads were set up for this. It also was equipped with, a, it was a Ford Racing version of an Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake. We had an MSD distributor. We had inch and three quarter long tube headers. We had a Holly 950 carburetor on this thing because this thing would eventually make pretty good power once we put the cylinder head swap on here. And so run with our stock head with the stock E7 TEN, our 393 actually produced 387.2 horsepower and it made a lot more torque than that because the head was restricting this thing. 461 foot-pounds of torque at 3,500 RPM. And we might not have had the peak torque uh, because our load in point was where the highest peak torque was. So we really should have tried loading this thing at 2,000 RPM and let it go through its curve. But this is what we did because this is where we thought this thing was going to make power, especially with the cylinder head upgrade. So the interesting thing about this, we can take a look at the data. If we take our 160 CFM from our airflow testing on the stock head, and we take a look at 387 horsepower, we see that this combination actually produced 2.41 or horsepower per CFM, which is, for me, I think, is the highest number I've seen of any of the combinations that I've tested. Specific, you know, specifically speaking, it's not that this thing made a lot of power, it's just that relative to the airflow, it made a lot of power with very little airflow. And the reason is this, if we were to take this combination and put it on an airflow bench, we see that this thing flows 160 or so CFM on the stock head. But the reason that it's making so much power on this combination as compared to the other two is really this bigger motor has so much more draw on the same head. So it would be like us taking the head, putting on a flow bench and running it at a higher depression than 28 inches. So we would have more draw on it. The airflow actually would kind of go up and that's why it's a, we're able to make this much more power. It'd be nice if we were able to do this with the next set of heads. If we had the same specific like power output relative to the airflow, we would be making some serious power, but that gets harder and harder to do. But let's take a quick look and see what happened when we um, added a different cylinder head. We ran this with a bunch of different heads because this is for our airflow head test. Uh, and we, this is a set of airflow research heads. We also ran Brodex and Dart and lots of heads, and they all made, as you might imagine, compared to a socket, they all made a ton of power. Equipped with the airflow research 205 head, the power jumped up from 387 to 555 horsepower with no other change. All we did was take those heads off, put these heads on, and ran it again. Uh, it took different push rods because of the cylinder head configuration, but we basically had a combination that really, really needed <laughs> one thing, and that was more head flow. It had camshaft, it had displacement, it had carburetor, it had intake, it had all the things. So once we gave it a cylinder head like these Airflow Research 205 heads, which flow very well, it made a lot of power. As I said, 555 horsepower and 515 foot-pounds of torque. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from this very cool head test on our 5-liter Ford head run on the 306? the 333 and the 392, aka 393 stroker for racing motor. Well, we learned the following thing, that our formula that suggests how much power the head will support actually is fairly accurate. Now, if we double the maximum flow rate of the head, in this case, we had 160 CFM head. If we double that, we know that that head will support, you know, roughly 322 horsepower. As we saw from our testing, that formula is not by any means absolute. Usually, and like on that 306, it makes less than that. If you've got a mild combination, it's not taking advantage of absolutely everything that that head has to offer, you usually make less than that formula. Once we stepped up to our 333 and really way up to the 392, we started making more than the power formula suggests. We were making more than double that output. In fact, on the 333, we made 2.2 horsepower per CFM, and on the 392, we made 2.4 horsepower per CFM, which, by the way, is the biggest number I've seen in my testing, and that's only because we set this thing up purposely with a very mediocre head and a very good combination, so it could, in fact, use everything that that head had to offer, but that's not what we'd normally recommend. And we saw the reason why. As we stepped up in cylinder head, even on the mild 306, putting a trick flow as cast head on the twisted wedge head, we picked up really good power gains. Same thing on the 333, and then the same thing, obviously, on the bigger 392. As we go up in displacement and we go up in power potential with more camshaft and more displacement and more compression, more RPM, it's definitely going to want more cylinder head. I'm Richard Holder. As I told you in the beginning, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.